Alright, good morning. Good morning. Uh, turn your Bible, if you will, to Jude, uh, Book of Jude. We're going to take a break from Romans uh, this morning, not because there's any lack of uh, material there that God's given us to study, to rejoice over, to believe, to follow, to learn. Not that there's any lack of stuff there. So much more than, much more than, it keeps saying <laughs> in, in chapter 5. Uh, but the Lord's given me some other stuff to, to uh, look at and preach about today. And as always, we're going to be looking at uh, several scriptures. Um, just the way God made me, the way God has shown me how to study and deliver these messages. Um, so I'm not... You know, when I was in school, I learned all the different techniques of how to preach, how to, you know, textual preaching, expository preaching, all that. I'm not good at any of that stuff. I'm not good at making fancy outlines. I'm not good at alliteration. I just, you know, I try to organize uh, what God gave me uh, in the way that he gave it to me. Amen. And try to make it as plain and simple as possible, just like he made it to me. I'm just trying to tell you what God told me. That's all. No more, no less. And, um, amen. So, uh, a lot of, a lot of preaching just in what I just said there. Um, but let's go ahead and read Jude verse, uh, 17 and 18. And then we'll get into the message. Or then we'll open in prayer rather. And then get into the message. 17. But beloved. Remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own godly lusts. And God willing, I'm going to bring a message to you this morning from God uh, entitled, Why We Memorize Scripture. Let's open in a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you so much for your many blessings. I thank you for Jesus Christ and the precious blood that he shed to pay for our sins. I thank you for these perfect words, these comforting words, these holy words, these righteous words, these everlasting words, these eternal words. I thank you for these words that you've given us, Lord, uh, that are there for our learning, uh, that we can have, have patience, that we can have comfort and hope, and that we can make it through our lives, that you've given us the tools that we need. Um, to survive this life, uh, even though, um, in the words of the Apostle Paul, we seem to be, of all men, most miserable. <laughs> but we're not, because we joy in tribulations also. Or we glory in tribulations also. Lord, uh, many things, I don't mean to be preaching a whole message in prayer, or referring to other messages, but Lord, please help us this morning, be with us, fill us with your spirit. Uh, give me the words to say, help them to be your words and not my own. And uh, protect us, keep the devils away. Open up the hearts and minds of all that are listening. I pray that you help them meet their needs. Amen. Comfort them, encourage them, strengthen them. Give them these words. Commit these words to their hearts, Lord, so that uh, they really get it. That they really learn them and can take hold on them. And, uh, and follow uh, what they say. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Uh, it's through His blood that I can. Uh, amen. I'm going to just turn off my phone here. Don't want to listen to it make noises all during the service. Alright. So, the Bible says... Uh, in verse 17 here of Jude, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to bring to you a message from God this morning entitled, Why We Memorize Scripture. And first and foremost, before any of the other reasons, and there are many reasons, the first reason why we should memorize Scripture is because God commands us to memorize Scripture. We memorize Scripture because we're told to. It says here in uh, verse 17, Remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
and you say, well, remember just means think of, you know, like, oh yeah, I remember God's words. No, he means remember the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. He means commit them to your memory and to your heart. He means remember them. He means don't forget them. He means hold them fast. He means keep them. All right, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 13. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 13. And the Bible says there, or here rather, it's there now, but it'll be here when I get there. <laughs> Second Timothy 1.13, he says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me, in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. He says, hold it fast. Hold fast the form. He doesn't say, allow the form to be changed so that it can be better understood by the modern reader. He says, hold it fast. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me. Taking for granted, of course, that you know what sound words are. Amen. And if there's any on this, uh, who could, within the sound of my voice who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the very words of the English text of the King James Bible. I'm talking about in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. I'm talking about any verse that's missing from, from new versions, which all versions, all new versions are missing verses. Amen. I'm talking about 1 John 5, 7. I'm talking about 1 Timothy 6, verses 1 and 2. I'm talking about the word study in 2 Timothy 2, 15. I'm talking about through his blood in Ephesians 1, 7 and Colossians 1, 14. I'm talking about the love of money is the root of all evil versus uh, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil in the New American Standard. I'm talking about the form of sound words. I'm talking about the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And more importantly, I'm talking about every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, before we turn to Matthew 4.4 4, uh, and see that verse, I want you to notice the context of 2 Timothy 2.13 where we are. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Alright, back up one verse. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. See? He says, in the context of suffering, in the context of not being ashamed, in the context of believing God, And in the context of being fully persuaded that God uh, is going to keep his promise, he says, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. And I bring that up to make, to make the point that God commands us to do these things, but he commands us to do them for a purpose. It's not uh, memorize scripture because you're told to. Uh, like, you know, you're going to convert to Judaism because you met a pretty girl who has to be Jewish and she won't marry you if you're not a Jew. And so you have to learn a bunch of stuff from the Talmud and the, and the other stuff, which I don't even know off the top of my head right now. And I don't need to know because I have this book. But these are not, these words aren't academic. They're not, uh, uh just information. They are the truth from God about a relationship that you have with God if you've trusted Him for your salvation. If you've put your faith and trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And with that comes these things. For unto you it is given the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. But in the suffering, God gives you a way to endure the suffering. And that way, part of that way, is his words. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. And he tells us to, he tells us to remember the words. He tells us to hold fast the form of sound words. Alright, now turn over to two passages. Uh, Luke 4.4 4 in one hand, Matthew 4.4 4 in the other. Matthew 4.4 4 
Matthew 4.4, 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Actually, that will do. Let's just stay right there. But notice the previous verse. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. See? Because look at one verse before that. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. That's pretty hungry, amen. You ever not eat for forty days and forty nights? That's a long time to go without food. Amen. And there's even argument about whether or not a person can even live that long without any sustenance at all, academically. But we see here that it can be because Jesus did it in, in his flesh. And it, but he was hungry afterwards, verse 2, which is one of the proofs that he was a man. That he was fully man just as he was fully God because he got hungry sometimes when he didn't eat. Amen. <laughs> If he was just God, he didn't ever have any need for food. He didn't have any need to be hungry. He wouldn't have known hunger. But he was, and he did, amen, for us. Now look at verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now just picture this. Imagine you're uh, in, the, in the wilderness, verse 1, and the reason why you went there is so that you could be tempted by the devil. You're walking around the wilderness, uh, you haven't eaten for 40 days, you're hungry. And the, the thing that's hitting you the most, the thing that uh, you're noticing the most is you're hungry. Because you haven't eaten. And the tempter, which is Satan, comes to him and he says, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Alright, you're hungry, why don't you eat? You know you can provide yourself the food... And what did, he, what did he say? He said, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We are commanded to remember the words of God because the words of God are sufficient for us to live by even over and above food. Now, don't misquote me, I'm not saying you should quit eating, amen? you got to feed your flesh, or it'll die. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And this whole situation was engineered by God. Uh, God put Jesus in this situation in order to show and to prove and to demonstrate that you need the Word of God more than you need breakfast. Amen? Man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that, that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And if you need the Word of God that much, how come you can't remember any of the things that it says? The Bible says uh, in Psalm 119.11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Alright, now in the context here of Matthew 4, where he says, Man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I want you to look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And in the same, the same kind of situation, um, where Jesus was hungry, But he had the word of God to sustain him. Amen. In his hunger. He had the word of God to provide comfort for him uh, over and above the comfort that he would have gotten uh, from food which would have satisfied his hunger. Amen. Remember Esau, oh, I'm at the point to die and sold his birthright. Alright, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. And look at verse 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. He says, I'm giving you these commandments. I command you these things that you, you can do them. Not because I want to put a burden on you that you can't bear. Not because I want you to fill your head with a bunch of useless, meaningless knowledge that you can look up at any time. But I want you to remember these words. I want you to have them in your heart. I want you to follow them. 
What does it say? That ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness. Notice the parallel to uh, forty days and forty nights. To humble thee. So why does God put me through stuff? Why doesn't God give me what he wants to give me right now? Why doesn't? Why don't I have the fulfillment of the blessing? Why don't I have you know, a mansion on a hilltop? Why don't I have all the things that God wants for me right now? Why am I not where God wants me to be in the ministry? Why do I am I not the pastor of a, of a church with 500 people in it, with a big bus program and and Sunday school and and Christmas cantata and all the things to humble thee and to prove thee? See, notice to humble thee. Notice to humble thee. Well, I don't know. I'm not the guy full of pride. I don't know. You're full of pride, dude. Are you walking around this earth? Are you a man? Then you got pride. And God has to humble you. Amen. Dr. Robin used to say, down boy. He talked to you like he talked to a dog. Sometimes. Down boy. And not in, uh, in ineffection, because I think he cared more about his dogs than he did some people. Amen. <laughs> but to humble thee. And I say that in affection and kind remembrance of the man. Amen. Mm-hmm. To humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. See? And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Notice the connection to Matthew 4 and Luke 4. And fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Amen? Mm-hmm. Now, if you got your finger uh, still in Matthew chapter 4, it's okay if you don't, but if you do, you should notice the fact that the word word there in Deuteronomy 3 is in italics, which means uh, there's no corresponding word in Hebrew uh, for for that word in English. Word. But when Jesus quoted the verse in Matthew 4.4, 4, it's not in italics. Which means the word does occur in Greek. Now, I'm not going to the Greek and Hebrew. What I'm telling you is that Jesus treated the italicized word as if it was a part of Scripture. As if it was there fully. Which goes to show you that you just don't have a clue, you Greek and Hebrew scholar. All you ignorant jerks who uh, criticize the Bible for its italicized words. All you fools. All you non-believers. All you infidels. Who don't believe the Bible and criticize the Bible uh, because of these italicized words which you say don't belong there. Jesus thought they belonged there. Jesus treated them like they were there. And Jesus didn't even bad an eye. He just quoted it. He gave it the full respect of every other word in the verse. Amen. But notice this. Man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So not only in these few verses, Jude 17, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is a direct command. 2 Timothy 1.13 Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Matthew 4.4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Psalm 119.11, thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Why do we memorize scripture? Number one, we're commanded to, but as a sub-point, we're not commanded to for no reason. He gives us the reason. Because these, he gives us these words because we need these words to survive in life. We need these words to live by. We need these words to grow. Desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby, uh, Peter says. Amen? And we ought to live by them. Man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And in both times that that verse is quoted, 
when it was originally said in Deuteronomy 8, and when Jesus quoted it in Matthew 4.4, 4, and again in Luke 4.4, 4, it was in the context of suffering. Remember Philippians 1. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Uh, the Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, in verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And, uh, so if you've never suffered, you've been a Christian one, two, three, four, five, six years, and you've never suffered any persecution, then you, there's something bad wrong. You're not doing something right. You're not living by these words. <clears throat> Why do we memorize scripture? Number one, because we're told to. Number two, because it is a means, it is the primary means of showing our love for God and of fulfilling the great the first and great commandment. Turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Why do we memorize scripture? Because it shows that we love God. Why do we memorize scripture? Not because it shows that we love God, but because we do love God. Now, that begs the question, do you love God? Do you love God? John 14, and look down at verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now, let that sink in for a minute. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So, if you hear all this talk about all the time about lost people, lost Catholics who are religious and go to church and use Jesus' name, Jesus God Bible, Jesus God Bible, sacraments, Pope, Jesus God Bible, and they drop his name, and they and you think because they use his name uh, that they're Christians. But the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It does not say, Be baptized, and thou shalt be saved, uh, in the context of the New Testament church in this age. Uh, the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, Acts 16.31. It does not say, Keep the sacraments, and thou shalt be saved. It says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It does not say, Don't commit a mortal sin, and thou shalt be saved. It says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It does not say, Go ahead and give a few thousand dollars to the church to buy an indulgence so that you can... Buy uh, five or ten dollar, five or ten years uh, off of purgatory from your dead grandmother, so that she can make it to heaven five or ten years uh, sooner than she would have because of this money that you paid to the church. That's called extortion. Say, so what are you, what are you talking about? Are you talking about memorizing scripture? I am. If a man loved me, he will keep my words. Now, I'm not saying everybody who memorizes scripture loves God. But I am saying that loving God will produce a man who memorizes scripture. Or a woman. Amen. If a man love me, he says, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. You say, well... It says keep his words there, but it's not, that's just, that doesn't mean memorize scripture. That means, you know, like, obey him, keep his commandments. It also means that. But this verse specifically is addressing, uh, his words, keeping his words. Look back at verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So there he's talking about his commandments, but in verse 23 he's talking about his commandments in so much as they have to do with his words. Specifically, the command to remember them, to keep them, to obey them, to follow them, to know what they are. Amen? Amen. Alright, now turn back to Deuteronomy <coughs> chapter 5. We're talking about loving God. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Do you love God? Then memorize scripture. Deuteronomy 5. Deuteronomy 5. I just 
don't accept that uh, the Christian life is just about getting saved and then that's that. Although, if you uh, were to judge by 90% of Christianity, as it's represented, of saved people who never grow because they're not being fed, because their pastor is an idle shepherd, <clears throat> who doesn't believe the Bible or doesn't know the Bible, and God help those people, and, uh, and uh, God help them. But if you're within the sound, if you're one of those people and you're within the sound of my voice, I pray to God that you're not, but if you are, if you're within the sound of my voice, you can get to God through this book. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can learn and grow. You can have the things that God wants you to have and be the man that God wants you to be or the woman that God wants you to be or the child that God wants you to be. You can have all the things that God wants you to have and be all the things that God wants you to be and do all the things that God wants you to do just by opening up this book and finding the Lord in these words. If a man love me, he will keep my words. Deuteronomy 5, verses 4 through 9. Uh, that's not excuse me Deuteronomy 6 verses 4 through 9 hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might now we find out in the New Testament that verse 5 um, is the first and great commandment. That all the law and the prophets hang on these two. The, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And then the second one is like unto it, which is thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And everybody in the world today will claim the second commandment to the exclusion of the first. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Yeah, that's second to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Amen. With all thy might. Uh, in another place it's mind. In another place it's strength. But the thing that I want you to notice about this this morning is verse 6. In these words, which I command thee this day, notice words, shall be in thine heart. Does that sound familiar? Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee? Well, that's just something David did. That's not a direct, direct command for us to do. The things which are written aforetime were written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the Scriptures we might have hope. So just because uh, Psalm 119.11 is not worded as a direct command, it's given as an example of something that you're supposed to be and to do. First of all. Second of all, if that weren't enough, it is a direct command. And it's more than a direct command. It's the direct command. It's the first and great commandment. It's part and parcel with thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou, thou risest up, and when thou, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. And thou shalt be as frontless between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. You should fill your heart with Scripture. You should fill your mind with Scripture. Uh, to the extent uh, that verse 5 goes, All thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, you should be all about these words. You should memorize them. You should read them. You should know them. You should talk about them. You should have um, signs all over your house about them. You should have crochets, crochet things that say, uh, a friend loveth at all times. You should say, you should have a little cute little folksy, uh, pictures that say, uh, uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. You should have those things all over your house. Scripture. Scripture is always appropriate to hang, amen. So I don't believe in pictures and grammar. Okay, screw. How about scripture? How about the words that proceed out of the mouth of God? You believe in those? Amen. How about you take down your statue of Mary and put up a Bible verse? How about pray for the peace of Jerusalem? Amen. How about the wicked shall be turned to hell and all nations that forget God? 
How about for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Alright, why do we memorize scripture? We memorize it because we're told to. We're commanded to by God, both in the Old Testament and in the New. He said, but beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And notice, in that context, it's not the doctrines, it's not the message, it's not the general principles, it's not the morality, it's not the uh, general disposition, it's not anything else. Remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, from the words come all those other things. Doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. But it starts with the words. Amen? Amen. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Man shall not live by bread alone, Jesus Christ said, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. How are you going to live by them if you don't know what they are? How are you going to keep them when you're going through your day and you encounter a situation where you need one of them, like the situation Jesus was in when he was approached by the tempter, Satan, and he said, command these stones to be made bread. Some of you would just be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, i got to eat, right? I'm hungry, nothing wrong with eating. And there is nothing wrong with eating. But there would have been in that moment, because Jesus was there for a purpose, he had a job to do, and his job to res- was to resist. And, and the thing that he called upon to help him to resist was the power of the Word of God. See, he just remembered the command, and he remembered uh, that that's what he was there doing, and he remembered the words, he said the words, and that enabled him to do what God was asking him to do. The words themselves. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And not only that, he fulfilled the verse, because not only did he not live by bread alone, plainly, because he hadn't eaten in 40 days and 40 nights, but he lived... By the power of these words to sustain it. Amen? And, by the way, that's the whole reason why they had to go through the, uh, the 40 years in the wilderness. Why can't I just be in the promised land right now? Well, because I want to humble you. Because I want to prove you whether you're going to obey me or not. And number three, because I want to demonstrate to you what this book is for which is for you to live by. First, in the sense of just a command, and we're told to, so we should do it. But secondly, because it has to do with your relationship with God, and refreshing it, and remembering it, and renewing it day by day. Man shall live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And these words shall be in thine heart. First, because we're told to. Second, because it's a mean, it is the means of showing our love for God. Don't sell me that crap about some Catholic friend that you know that you claim loves God because she goes to Mass every week. Or he. If a man love me, he will keep my words. Amen. Now, what about you, Christian? What about you, saved person? What about you, person who wouldn't dream of going to Mass, who isn't a Catholic? What about you, Christian, who received Christ as a payment for your sin and surely and genuinely are going to heaven when you die because the shed blood of Jesus Christ paid for your sins and no other reason? What about you? Do you love God? It's been demonstrated that He loves you. Here's how you love Him. Amen. Amen. Notice thirdly that it comes with a promise. Uh, Turn back to John 14. John 14. John 14. In verse 23 again, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him. Promise number one. And we will come unto him. Notice we. Promise number two. And make our abode with him. Promise number three. So this is not, uh, keep his words and thou shalt be saved. This is something different, apart from salvation, that God promises to those of you who will keep his words. 
If a man love me, he will keep his keep my words. And here's what I promise you. My Father will love him. That's a special kind of love that's above and beyond the normal kind of love. Uh, because look at verse 22. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Because remember back in John 3, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See? That's the kind of love that makes salvation available to you. That's Romans 5, eight. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But here in verse 23, we have the promise of even more love from God if you will keep his words. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him. Why well, I thought he already did. Greater love hath no man this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Well, maybe not greater, but more love. My Father will love him. My Father will love him. Just let that sink in. And we will come unto him. Well, I thought I already had. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You do. This is more than that. And we will come unto him. And make our abode with him. And not only will we come, but we'll stay there. See? What are you talking about? I'm talking about personal fellowship. I'm talking about God talking to you through his words. When you remember them. And they're floating around in your mind and in your heart. I'm talking about when you get in trouble and God calls a verse of scripture to your mind to deliver you from that. That's God loving you in a way above and beyond and additional uh, to when he died on the cross for your sins. Say, what's God ever done for me? He died on the cross for your sins. What more could he give? He, I'll tell you what more. A lot more. He saved us from wrath. Amen. But he gave us this book. That's more. That's more. Alright. Turn to John 15. John 15. One chapter over. and Look down at verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, and so shall ye be my disciples. John 15, 7 and 8. It's just one chapter over. Now notice, uh, he said, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, now, how, what do you suppose that means? His words abide in you. How can a word? How can his words abide in you? Well, you mean like thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee? Like these words shall be in thine heart. Like if a man love me, he will keep my words. Like remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, we memorize scripture because we're told to. Second of all, because it's a, it's the means of showing our love for God and fulfilling the first and great commandment in Christ. And thirdly, it comes with a promise that the Father will, that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ will love us if we keep His words, that they will come unto us, and that they will abide with us uh, in fellowship. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. Amen. These words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. It comes with the promise of God answering your prayers. Amen. You want to get your prayers answered? Charismatic, you want to get your prayers answered? Catholic, who, who uh, you know, uh, puts the ashes on the forehead and goes around with the palm Sundays on Sunday, on palms, the palms on Palm Sunday. You want to get your prayers answered? Martin Luther whipping yourself with a cat of nine tails, uh, saying the just shall live by faith. You want to have your prayer answered? Memorize scripture. Amen. You want God to love you more than he already has? Memorize scripture. And don't just memorize it so you can say it and forget it. Keep it. Hold it fast. Alright, now there's many other points uh, to why we memorize scripture. There's many other reasons. Um, 
The obvious one, Psalm 119.11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. It helps us to keep from sin. And now uh, let me tell you why we don't memorize scripture. Or, uh, we don't memorize scripture uh, because we are smart and want to impress everybody with our intelligence. We don't memorize scripture because we want everybody to know how holy and pious we are. We memorize scripture because it's a tool... It's much more than a tool. It's a shield and a buckler. It is a, a sword. It is everything that we need. And we memorize it so that we can have those things each and every moment of the day as we go through life and call upon them when needed in order to survive. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And yes, God commanded us to, but not for no reason. He commanded us to so that we could have and access and know greater love from the Father. More love from the Father. So that we can know how to fulfill the first and great commandment. So that we can have our prayers answered. So that the Father and the Son will come unto us and abide with us. In a, in a way that's additional to uh, the way that He does when He gets saved. Amen? Mm -hmm. Alright. Um, uh, that's it for that. That's not it for that. There's far more to it. Uh, but just for right now, that's enough. Uh, just a few things at a time. Just three points this morning. Why I memorize scripture. And um, in this church, in this family, in both of those things, we memorize scripture. Amen? And not because we're better, uh, but because we need it. <laughs> we need it. Uh, because we're commanded to, we need it because we want God's love, and we want to love God. And we want the promise that comes for, for, from obeying uh, those things. And we, we, the Word of God is precious to us, and, and we want to know what it says. We want to remember what it says. We want to live by it, and live from it, and uh, have it sustain us. And many other things. And if you've never memorized scripture, or if you don't, you aren't in the practice of memorizing scripture, then let me exhort you. Uh, let me command and teach you, as it says in, in Timothy. Pick up the book and memorize it. So I don't know how. That's okay. Uh, you can learn how. God will help you. You don't need me to learn how to memorize scripture, amen. But I am here to help. And, uh, first way you memorize it is by repeating it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Alright, start with that. Can you, can you remember that for a few seconds? Alright, say it again. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Think about it for a sec. Say it again from memory without looking. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then once you said that, 30, 40, 50 times, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five, however long it takes, then go on to the next part. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep. Now say that. Then once you said that uh, 30, 40, 50 times, then put the two together. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness upon the face of the deep. And so on and so forth, one piece at a time. And uh, that's all it is, is repetition. But it's not line upon line, precept upon precept. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, the Bible uh, talks about in Isaiah 28. But more than that, importantly, and the thing that I want to impress upon you this morning, is that it's not just to memorize these words, to have them in your head so that you can spit them off and let everybody know how smart you are and make them think you're better than them. Because you're not and you're not. You should do it for the express purpose of getting these words into your heart and soul. So that you can lay hold on this kind of relationship that God wants to have with you of more love. Love that's above and beyond, if you can even imagine. Uh, God commands His love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. See? It doesn't just stop when you get saved. There's more to this thing of being saved than just than just going to heaven. It's knowing God and learning God and growing closer to God and being sustained by God 
and having God be... You ever, have, you ever have a real friend? A friend that you could count on, that you could call, that you knew would never let you down? No. You have one of those? My dad told me when I, was, when I was a boy, he said, you'll go through your whole life and you'll meet hundreds and thousands of people who call themselves your friends, but you'll find out in your first tragedy how many of them are actually your friends. And I promise you, that will be less that you can count on one hand. And that's no lie, friend. But God wants to be that for you. He wants to have that kind of love with you, Christian. He died for you. You're his son. And like every father wants for his son, he wants to be close to him. He wants to love him. He wants to give good things to him. He wants to be there to protect him. He wants to show him the things that he's learned so that he doesn't fall into the same trap that you fell into. All those same things. Amen. And even after uh, you're grown. Memorize Scripture. Keep His words. Let me put it in the words in which God puts it. Beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Alright. Dear God, we thank you so much for your many blessings. I thank you for Jesus Christ and the precious blood that He shed on the cross for our sins. I thank you for this book. I thank you for the opportunity and the ability to memorize uh, Scripture. And I pray that you help us to do that. And I pray that you'd encourage us and strengthen us in doing that. And all the folks that that are listening, uh, that can hear, that are within the sound of my voice, I pray that you let these things sink down into their ears and into their hearts. And encourage them and stir them up to pick up this book and read these words and memorize these words. Not to fulfill some academic requirement, but to have the things that God promises uh, to those that keep his words. Amen? Amen. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.